Hello guys, it's Dr. Beard again, joined by uh, my husband Paul. Hello. And um, this is our podcast, Self-Care is the New Health Care. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about um, cen- censorship, misinformation, and just plain bad advice, mm-hmm. and, uh, w- especially with regard to health. But before we get started, uh, let's listen to our intro. I don't take nothing. That a doctor don't prescribe. I don't do no drugs, man. I don't do no drugs, man. I don't smoke no blood, man. I don't do no drugs, man. It angers up that blood, man. So I don't do. All right, so we're back, and you know what that means. I have to give my waiver. Um, this content is for informational and educational purposes only. It is not intended to provide medical advice or to take the place of medical advice or treatment from a personal physician. And I'm not your personal physician, just right. to make that clear. All right. So we've got a lot to talk about today. Fun stuff. This is, uh, a lot of this is what drove you to functional medicine, in addition to your own health story. But you right. started questioning things. Yeah. As any scientist How would. dare you question and even things. And even in medical school, they kind of... Oh, that was poo-pooed on. Can't you, do that. Uh, yeah. And, and when you did question things that didn't have an answer, um, it kind of made some of the professors... A little angry. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Right. And <laughs> what we are telling you is the truth. And if anyone questions what you tell them that you learned in medical school, you are to laugh at them and chastise them. It's basically what, what, what we were taught to do. Well, let's start with a couple of quotes. Um, you found a great one yesterday. I'm just going to read it. We didn't, we didn't, this was an anonymous one, but it came out. It says, when you cut out a man's tongue, you're not proving him a liar. You're just telling the world that you fear what they will say. That's a great one. That, that hits the, the nail on the head. And I think another one, obviously we're big fans of Linus Pauling, the Nobel, uh, Nobel Peace, for, uh, Peace Prize for, and for medicine. Right. Um, he said, in paraphrasing, the best way to get great ideas is to start with a lot of ideas. His whole premise was, have open dialogue. And that's what this whole podcast is about, is that you need to start questioning things because they are squashing information. and Very valuable, crucial information. Right. And, and the fact that they want to squash it is a huge red flag. They, 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 don't they call it the Streisand effect, which is if you try to... Well, if you trying to hide what you're doing... Brings attention to it. Yes. And we should, we should try to do that because um, there's a lot of things that are being hidden... Or squashed, and we need to pay attention to them. Yeah, it's, for me, that's a big red flag. When everybody, whenever a particular topic is um, censored or called a conspiracy theory, that's another one that mm-hmm. they use. That's just as they like to label everything as a conspiracy, so that you'll feel ridiculous if you should start to research that. Right, and most of the people saying that are non-scientists. They they scream the loudest. Or, or people that don't research. Um, which I encourage everyone to do, not just to listen to what we have to say, but go research yourself. Well, because they've been... And it takes time, you know? They've been proven wrong so many times. So let's just kind of go through... uh, We we started out with a bunch of examples, and we said, this is ridiculous. We're just going to give a few, because there's literally hundreds and hundreds. And thousands. (laughs) of, and, And some of them, you're like, Really? And like, and later on you can say, well, maybe that was back then, but not now. But then we can give examples. But right. And I'm sure some of this is not going to be new to you. Um, so, well, but some, it might be. Some of these were. In the early 1800s, Ignaz Semmelweis pioneered the antiseptic revolution as we know it today. Basically that you should wash your hands. Wash the instruments. Mm-hmm. Just right. basic antiseptic procedures. Right. He was ridiculed. At that time, a surgeon was judged by the amount of blood that they had mm-hmm. on their uniform. Yeah. If they were covered in blood, well, they had a good day's work. Right. And if you didn't have a lot of blood, well, what kind of loafer are you? Right. So he suggested, he noticed at first um, delivering babies, mm-hmm. that the, oh, out- yeah. the outcome of the mother and child was far superior when they used clean instruments, changed the bedding, did these things, yes. and he was ridiculed. Yeah, you- the death rate for the mother and the child went down drastically when they started incorporating these techniques. So he, he fought back and he um, published more studies. You know what they did? They put them in an insane asylum. <laughs> they called them crazy, had them admitted to an insane asylum, 
And then he died. Two weeks later. Two weeks later. Which basically means he was killed in, in the Probably, institution. yeah. And, and we all know this is everything that we should be doing. And, I mean, everything you can talk about is wash your hands, don't touch your face. seems so commonplace. This was the medical community then. Right. So, well, that was then, and they're just... Well, not. we've learned a lot then. With it, you know, that, that doesn't happen today. Let's, let's move forward to the 1900s. There was a, uh, some French obstetricians that developed incubators, mm -hmm. basically, which is commonplace in every NICU. Yeah, uh, in, in, every in, labor and delivery unit. Yep, yeah. and so it's just common. And for over 30 years, they had them in Europe, and we didn't have them here. They would say, this is ridiculous. Actually, we did have some here. You know where they were? They were in amusement parks as freak shows. And you'd pay 25 cents, and you could go see the preemie baby in the 25 inc cents? That was a lot back then. Back in the day? That mm -hmm. was a lot of money. To see the freak show of, an, uh, of a preemie in an incubator. Finally, in the late 1930s, we started bringing them here. Now it's commonplace. How could this occur? I have no idea. I could not find the reason of why they would not have bring them in. But always follow the money, folks. Yeah. So let's just go through some just the quick ones. Okay, th this is one of my favorites. <laughs> the CDC, the very trustworthy uh, CDC. Um, that is not a part of the government, people. It's an independent. Um, Most people don't know that. I know. It's not a part of our government, although they receive a lot of our government tax dollars. Mm -hmm. um, they said in 1952 that smoking was not only not harmful, but it was good for you. Yep. They promoted smoking. smoking. That's okay. Yeah. All right. So, and then most everybody, I think, has heard that one, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, the Ch Chappelle is one of our favorite comedians, and he said uh, he was applying for a job in one of his skits. And he was like, well, what, what scientific qualifications do you have? He goes, well, my, my father was in the Tuskegee experiments. <laughs> <laughs> for you guys that don't know what that is, it was an awful chapter in our history where the government, our government, our government, purposely infected African Americans with syphilis. And then withheld treatment. Told them they were being treated. Right. And they just wanted to see how it progressed. They did the same thing with radiation on multiple, multiple communities, exposing them to radiation, not telling them, and just collecting data. Right. Thousands died. I know. This is... And this these are just the ones that are widely public. Right. So what we're trying to establish is that in, within the scientific community, information is squashed. We're trying to say that within the government, horrible things occur. It's not that the government's bad, it's people in the government right. are bad. No one's watching the hen house, and that's the problem with a lot of... There's a lot of corruption yes, in our it, midst. It only takes a few to accomplish this. And it's still going on today, so don't, so don't uh, joke yourself there. i got to give this one to you because this is your favorite. The food pyramid. <laughs> and I, uh, it seems like we always talk about this. Because well, it's so wrong disaster known as the food pyramid that I had to learn and, and push on my patient on my and patients as a doc yeah and unlearn as a dietitian. And that's really I think when a lot of my questioning um, what the scientific community was doing was then. Because mm -hmm. I was like, this this does not make sense to me. Um, then also the use of margarine and the diet cokes and stuff, pushing that on our diabetics and you know, I was a dietitian then, and I was like, this, I, I can't do this. And I, I let my license and registration go by the wayside. I, I, I was like, I don't, I don't want to be a dietitian anymore. If this is what I have to do, I'm not going to do it. Um, and then I went into medicine, and that was the, the bad um, misinformation, disinformation opinions that I got there were, I mean, like, on steroids knowing what I know now you know and I'm not saying everything I'm not saying everything that I learned in medical I learned a lot of great stuff in medical right. school you know a lot um, and a lot of the what I learned I apply today and I'm glad for that learning and, the, and those skills and that education but um, a lot of it was just so much of the um, idiot the term idiopathic being used all the time we don't know why it happens but this is the pill that you prescribe or the procedure that you order or the don't, labs that you don't, order. Don't, go back to that you don't know what caused it but you know what pill to give for it. Right. How the hell does that happen? Well, you know, and, and everybody, you know, and, and knowing this as a functional medicine doctor, looking back, you know, it's very different for me because I just, I can, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Mm -hmm. So it just kind of makes me question all of the things that they were telling us, you know, is that, were you really telling me the truth? Is this, can I really trust what you told me? 
sometimes, you know, you put things into practice and you show, you know, okay, yes, this, right. this indeed is the truth. But when it comes to all the, um, oh, you know, the days and days and months and months and years of learning about pharmaceuticals and how they work and how you're supposed to use them for this condition or that one, but never, ever discussing what's causing these conditions. Well, I included this next one because it is one of the tactics they use, which is shaming. Shaming people to, to, to fall into line and not question. They used to blame schizophrenia on bad parenting. Mm -hmm. No other reason, you're just a bad parent. Yeah, and that's, and I see this still being played out in, and we not, know that's, not, we know that's not true. Yeah, not, and not just with schizophrenia, but with you know kids who have learning disabilities. You know, oh, you're just a bad parent. And, and I know some of these parents, and they're doing everything they know to do to help their child, you know, and, and it's always, uh, your kid's just, you're just a bad parent, your kid's just a bad kid. Yeah. Um, but, shame, but if you start delving into these kids' histories, it becomes pretty apparent in a lot of cases what's going on Right. And shame, from a medical perspective. And shaming, we don't know anything about COVID right now. I'm just going to say that because there's so, much yeah, information. I don't know that we'll ever know the truth. But really. I do know this. There's a lot of public shaming going on. Mm -hmm. If you say anything contrary to anything. The, the, the current narrative that's being pushed. You want people to die. By the, the media. You want people to die. At, that's where they, I, I don't know it's why like, we can't hold multiple. Conversations. You know. Yeah. I was like, I, I, no, I just want to talk. You want people to die. It's like, I can't get the words out of my mouth before they say that. I was like, and then, and the vast majority of them, in fact, all of them, none of them are scientists. It's like, okay, I don't even want to talk to you. Again, I'm not taking a stance one way or another. I just want to have a discussion and it's not allowed because of shaming. And if you're a doctor that speaks out on social media that, and you say anything counter to the media narrative, they will attack you in mm. hordes. And it's not some, some kind of organic movement. These are paid trolls. Yes. There's, there's hundreds, if not thousands of them that are on standby, ready to go after the target. And this has happened to me several times. We purposely, and we need to get better at it, avoid certain keywords because... Google, You'll have to deal with this. Well, Google, YouTube, they... they use, they'll censor it, they'll remove they, your they, posts. They, they use the algorithms to look for these words. They'll and, suppress your activity yeah. on your social media pages. Well, but, but we have more of that in the later mm -hmm. part. Um, aspirin, go over aspirin. Well, no, I, it was funny because I, you know, I still get my... All these journals from the, you know, the American Academy of Family Medicine, um, uh, uh, these um, primary care journals and things like that. Of course, they're just, all the advertisements are pharmaceutical advertisements. Mm -hmm. um, all the articles seem to push, you know, pharmaceuticals as the, as the treatment for whatever XYZ diagnosis it is. And I read them just to see what, what they're trying to, you know, what their spin is now, you know. And... Um, and it's funny because they were like, fish oil has not been now that now the thing is fish oil doesn't be has is not correlated with a reduced risk of cardiovascular disease. Well until 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 the pharmaceutical company came out with a synthetic omega three fatty acid supplement. Which doesn't have DH D, yeah, DHA. Yeah, DHA it, is not. It, in it. it only has the plant based version. So for years they said fish oil has no benefits, there's no proof. But all of a sudden, now you're watching the advertisements, and they'll say, "We have the only prescription fish, you know, oil substance." And it's like, but it's not even the good stuff. It's not even. Yeah, it's not even what you really need. So they they squashed it until they had a patentable item. That's what it comes back, folks. It's not that they're against natural remedies. If they could make money off of them, they, they would be all. They would. They would. And they and they just alter those natural remedies sometimes just enough mm -hmm. to make them patentable. Well, we mentioned on previous podcasts that the new trend is to take two drugs that are off patent, right. combine them. And now you have a new patentable, patentable drug. So two, two drugs that cost 50 cents a piece, a dollar for the dosage, now are $100 because it's brand new. Oh, and in that same, that same um, journal, it was talking about aspirin because you know how we were always pushing aspirin on everybody, you know, for cardiovascular, to prevent cardiovascular disease. So, well, now, uh, lo and behold, it's shown that it doesn't really help and may be making things worse. Mm -hmm. Wow. Who, wow. I mean, and I kept telling people that, but no, you know. What is the, two, the 244 drug recalls? What was the Oh, uh, that was, um, I was looking up 
Um, you know, because pharmaceuticals are always safe and effective. Until they're not. Until they're not. Um, and then I was looking up how many um, pharmaceuticals had been recalled. And from what I could research, it looked like there had been 244 of them mm-hmm. recalled. And I couldn't remember the time period that well, this involved. The, the one that stuck but out. But 244 is a lot of medications. And, you're, and, and just like Losartan was just uh, recalled. recalled because of uh, contaminants with cancer-causing. From China, yeah. From China, from for cancer-causing agents. So we'll probably be censored there because you mentioned China. That, that kicks in there. Censorship. Oh, was I not supposed to say it's, well, China? China. We did say China. Oh, it's like Trump. China. China. Okay. Um, the one that stuck out to me more is that every pharmaceutical company has been sued, not for a bad product. I can understand that how that happens. You're trying your best. You make a product. You miss something. You get okay. I but get, it passed all those it, trials, it, Paul. Okay, but, years and years of. But even then, I'll give them a pass that sometimes, you know, through the best diligence, mistakes are made. Mm. But every pharmaceutical company has been sued for covering it up. Right. Once they knew it was a problem, they plowed forward with advertising. Covered it up. Rode that horse into the ground to make a little bit more money. That is so... If And no one goes to jail. Or if they do, it's a but slap on the But the thing is, is because it's, 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 they make so much money off these drugs that the payouts, when it comes out... It's part of their business model. When it's model. exposed, is not nearly does not equal the profits they make. No. So they, I think they probably it's account for that, oh, factor it's, that. It's factored in, and sometimes they're, you know, the V word because we don't want to be censored. But what is something controversial that begins with a V? Right. You cannot sue pharmaceutical companies for injuries yeah. from V. From the, yeah. the injection. Right. No. Because. In 1986, the government passed a uh, basically. That was Reagan. Reagan passed that. Yes, yeah, so you you cannot sue. And the, and the, the guys was it's so important that we got to for protect, public health. For, we got we got we got to protect them. We've paid out 4.2 billion dollars since, since then. 1986, and that's just to the compensate the patients. That does not include legal costs or any of that. Work costs, nothing. That's just the payments the patients received. And per a Harvard study. Lord knows, I don't know if we can trust Harvard that much, considering what all is coming out of there. But um, a, a, an MD there showed that the reporting of adverse events from the V word um, was probably about one yes. percent. Only one percent of the adverse events were even being um, reported, well, because you- most people don't associate a lot of the issues that occur to the V word. You know, right, because it happens later. Right, it, it happens ha- much later than that initial, quote, allergic reaction. Which is 14 days, right? Well, most of them are only, the, the side effects are only studied out to typically 14 days. Some go to 30 days. Okay, but it can happen but, four months later or yeah, a year later. exactly. So I think... Which th- is very difficult, again, to tie that V, v word back to that event that occurs several months later. So people will say, well, because of V and because of Big Pharma, we live a lot longer. Our longevity has gone up precipitously since this has occurred, which is true. But what else has occurred? Better hygiene. Better hygiene. Better nutrition. We're no living. There's no longer, you know, people aren't living. There's, I mean, when a, when a lot of these outbreaks would occur, it was always in these horrid, horrid living conditions. Mm-hmm. I mean, people were, you know, 20 people living in one room, one toilet, no sewer. There were no sewer. They were working like dogs. With no safety. With no, you know. Because remember, work-related death is part of. I mean, these people were working like crazy Mm -hmm. all day long. Even small children were really um, doing hardcore manual labor and the nutrition was horrible and in those urban areas in addition to poor hygiene the pollution was horrible yes people don't know this in pittsburgh when they had oil lamps for their lighting and they were produced and they were the producer of steel for the world the pollution was so bad that the lights were on during the middle of the day right that's how much pollution was there that's Mm mind-blowing that the pollution was that bad yeah and uh, we've come a long way since then thank so, goodness so it's not big pharma and the v word that is responsible for our longevity in fact longevity finally is starting to go down right so if that's the case why so, yeah our, our children now have a, a lower life expectancy 
than we do. So I want to go, and I'm going to turn a lot of these back over to Amy because she's, but this, this stuff just, I love it. And since I'm not the doctor, I can talk about it and she won't get in trouble. But if you look at the history of the pharmaceutical industry and understand its roots, it's insidious. So Rockefeller was the richest man Oh, ever. now you're going into conspiracy land. I'm going to avoid the conspiracy. I'm just going to go a couple I, things. I remember the first time I've, I've, I talked about this, this again uh, brought out the trolls. Oh, it's amazing. It, it, yeah. So I'm not going to go into being too much conspiracy. I'm just going to give a, little, a few facts. He was the richest man ever. If you take his dollars today, he was worth over $300 billion. So it dwarfs Bezos and Gates as far as right. money. He was the first person that was taken down by the monopoly antitrust suits. And it was difficult because he owned Congress. He owned everything. He owned everything. But they, it was, he was so bad at things, they finally got him. He had a famous quote, which was, competition is a sin. Which means he didn't want to have a better product. He wanted to get rid of the competition, and that's what he did. He did a disinformation campaign on electricity so he could sell the oil for the lamps. Right. He, went, he spent mo all kinds of money saying how dangerous electricity is. He teamed up with Edison to prove it. How This should not be a surprise to many of you. So he did everything possible to keep his monopoly as long as possible. Near the end of this, of this he had a, a lot of byproduct called coal tar. Mm -hmm. Coal tar is a byproduct of, of, of petroleum. What can I do with it? When you hear about the term snake oil salesman, most of them were... He was the original. He, it was coal tar byproducts, and these were the original ones. But that was kind of a limited market. He said, ah, you know, he's, he's a big player. He's like, okay. So he went and bought a German pharmaceutical company. Mm -hmm. And then he hired Flexner, who is a, a, was basically an ad person. But he, right. And he... His marketing person. His marketing person. So he, as, as, as he's promoting pharmaceuticals, Flexner's out there. He did disinformation saying that natural remedies or quackery. Yeah. He, That's really where the term quack came from was then. Mm -hmm. Their disinformation campaign against natural treatments. Right. He lobbied Congress, said there's too many medical inst institutions out there. we got to standardize this. Right. So when he said... Too many of them teaching natural treatments. Right. So he said, we need treatments. To, we got to get rid of them because those are bad. And we're going to make them the ones I believe in. And I'm going to give them endowments. And they're going to keep those endowments as long as they teach allopathic medicine. Right. Allopathic medicine is tr treat the symptom, which is basically a pill for an ill technology. Right. right. That's crazy, folks. He paid someone to create the medical institutions. He created a disinformation squashing any type of natural treatment. Oh, by the way, he also kept his own homeopathic doctor for himself. Right. Just to make it, you know, you can't make this stuff up. It's, it's if you, this... This is going on right now. We're seeing this play out. Just in different forms. In front of our eyes, okay? So especially with the treatments when it comes to COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we already know high-dose vitamins, IV vitamin C. You know, we, that has been working for people. Or at least discuss it. At least discuss the possibility. And, and, is right, they and they're, not even, they're not even talking about ways to optimize your immune system. They just... they. They all, all they want to talk about is the pill to treat it when you get it. How about preventing it? Well. And, it, and it's not just about wearing gloves and masks. You know? It, so, I, so we were watching a, a great podcast. Not a podcast. It was a, it was a webinar from the people who Amy gets her information from. The, some of it. Yeah. Institute of Functional Medicine. And they were saying that the number one defense against COVID is, of course, the immune system. But more importantly, it's the innate immune system. Right. That, Kind of go over that a little bit because I don't think people understand that. Well, you have, there's several, the, the immune system is very complex. complex mm -hmm. Okay. It's not simple. It's very complex. And even, and I realize it even more so now than when I was in medical school, um, there's a lot of things that I was not taught about the immune system that I've le since learned on my own and have found to be true. But the innate system is, it's its first line of defense. Okay. Okay. Like if you were to cut yourself, the innate immune response, um, those white blood cells, the the phagocytes, the mac, you know the macrophages, uh, the, the, those things start attacking any possible foreign invaders right then, mm -hmm. and that typically, you know, and it's mostly takes an, care of itself. It's mostly an IgA response, right? Right. So, yeah, it, IgA is it's typically oh, most of it is um, secretory IgA in your you know your gut. 
Mm -hmm. and, you know? your, and your mucus. Right. And, and your mucus is coating your nose, your mouth, all of this. So but the, I don't want to get I don't want to get into the weeds or one is the that system. All the things they're talking about are downstream from that, but they're pointing out this is the actual best defense, and no one's talking about it. Right. I mean, we could actually the people who are susceptible to this probably have. The low, immune, I, low IGA. Well, no, or just immune dysregulation. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at the ones that seem to be more most susceptible, um, at least the initial reports, okay? Who knows what we might learn a year, 10 years from now, but it does appear to be those that have some immune dysregulation. They're obese. They have underlying, you know, COPD, um, asthma, uh, probably... The elderly, mm -hmm. you know, because they're always polypharmacied out on multiple meds. Those meds almost always are going to interfere either directly or indirectly with your immune system. Right. They're keeping you alive until they're not. Right. Um, and so th these are the ones that are are more at risk. So this is really the equivalent of modern day book burning, isn't it? Yes. We we have censorship is real, and, and it and it's. And we already know that, you know, the Google whistleblower came out and said that this was happening to um, websites that were promoting natural remedies mm -hmm. um, and that they were being suppressed. And the ones that weren't being suppressed were, you know, Mayo, um, WebMD, and things like that. Even clinic. They're, they're actually, they're, they're um, what do you call their, their clicks or their, um, their traffic actually went up. Right. Where and some, the other ones went way down. Yeah, some of your most popular alternative medicine. When I say alternative, I'm just talking about natural. These, right. these are still doc or alternative to the current pharmaceutical but, but, uh, conventional medicine. I can name them, but I don't want to promote them because we're they're they're actually not competition. We're different than they are. But they're these were mainstream people who dominated these search engines, and their their traffic went down by over ninety percent overnight. Mm -hmm. Because basically, immediately, they, they just said, nope, we're not going to allow you to say this. You're not allowed to say a multivitamin might help you or this. It, it's, it, and folks, we're not ever taking a claim of a supplement that's going to cure or do anything. We're just talking about general ways to improve your overall health right. to, keep, to keep you strong. Um, those, those, there was two ER docs in California that were censored. I thought that was horrible. Yeah, I actually liked what they had to say, you know, um, just by using, you know, the, you know, they were two urgent care. They had they owned urgent care centers, but they were also ER docs. And they were yeah, also ER docs. And for some reason, they were um, bullied because you know they owned urgent care centers. And I was like, well, what does that have to do with what they're discussing? Mm -hmm. You know, if anything, it's going to harm their business and not help it because mm -hmm. they don't. You know, they're trying to tell you you know how to improve your you know your immune function and really what not to be so scared and. Um, it's not what you think it is. A lot more it's, the mortality rate isn't nearly as bad as what they're making it out to be. Well, you know, they had millions and millions of views on that video, and it, it was removed from YouTube. Yeah, just because it went counter to the narrative that the powers that be want. And, I, and some of this is legitimate. So a lot of what's going on with COVID, they're taking down because they don't want people. There, there have been some quacks that have promoted bizarre treatments. But don't take it down. Let everybody, if you want to go out and make outrageous claims, do it. Well, you know that's a that's that's a libertarian type freedom of speech. Which exactly. I, but it, we should but bare minimum. So who's so okay? So who should not? I, so would you say that about um, Fauci and get Bill Gates? Should they have a platform? Do you want them to be taken down? They should be on a platform with a trap door <laughs> underneath it and a rope. So I'm just saying. So you know, I, I, all. All thought needs to be out there and let people, yeah, you know, so judge for themselves. If, if Google and, and Facebook was concerned about this, what they could do is just put a little banner that says, not vetted. You know? Well, who's doing the vetting? Well, no, but say, at least they could say, leave it up, but just say this but, is but, not... But even them, even when they say not vetted, they're still putting into your mind the, the fact that it may not be true. Right. So I don't even like... I hate that. I hate when I see these... This this is... Um, this is what do they what do they call it on uh, Facebook now when you have information that may not be uh, suitable content? I can't, oh. I can't remember what they they were doing. Well, let's take it to extremes. What about the person who was up in Redbud that was struck by lightning and that gave him powers to heal? Oh, be, oh yeah. So I mean, at what point do you want to allow an idiot a platform? He, here's hey, it's freedom of speech. This I, I thought we lived in a free country. If 
there were lots of people going to see him. And you know what? That's their right. If they want to see someone who has not been to medical school or has any type of scientific background, that's on them. That has, What business is it yours? That's between them and Barry. Bless his heart. He passed away. Mm-hmm. But that's on, that's between them. It's none of your business. No, I agree. And, you but, know. you know, I, I will say that, you know, he, he gave some bad advice to some people on a couple occasions because I saw him. Yeah, and sometimes his bad advice is just coming from a friend. So if you're that stupid to take it, I had someone I knew. I think in, you're, we should all be free to take it, anybody's advice that we want to. Yeah, I had a friend in Colorado who was... Because now they, I'm starting they, to find out that a lot of people that are the experts are giving out really bad information. Well, we just went through a whole thing. I mean, this is what it's all... This is, this is all wrong. A lot of this is being exposed right now, too. The experts had these models. You know, two million of us were going to die, and they kept revising it all the time. You know, every few days it gets revised. Um, so, And those were the experts. Yeah, and they never once said, we really don't know, which they should have. They would have And I can... I agree with that. It's hard to know. I'm not blaming them. It's like, but at least admit you don't... I, I'm just kind of guessing... But you know, yeah. the experts told me in the dietetic school that, you know, margarine was good and the food pyramid is what we should be, how we should be eating. Mm. So, you know, no, I agree. And it, it's, I was trying to tell you about the person in Colorado that they were in the natural and they were putting, okay. she was putting her breast milk in her baby's ear for an earache because mm-hmm. someone had told her that. Of course it didn't help, but so do you, should that be censored? I don't think there should be censor, censor, censoring of any information. I think people should be allowed to be complete dumbasses. So let's let's take it. So can we agree on this? Should they at least have their credentials at the top of their? It should be. It should be on the person. If you're willing to take some take somebody's claim at to heart and go do it, it's on you to follow through and research their qualifications mm-hmm. and their history. That's on you. Right. Okay. But they should at least list those qualifications. I don't think they should list anything uh, if they don't. If they don't, what, we, we what tell, did you turn into? We tell our qualifications before every podcast. But that's because we want to do it. Yeah, if, if, that's a slippery. So I, I think you should at least say, "Here's my credentials." Like when I talk about farming and gardening, I explain what I've done, which is substantial. I think it's a good policy to have. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you have to do it. All right. There's a lot of people out there that call themselves doctors with PhDs, you know, and right. that can be very confusing to people. That's true. And there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of um, doctorates of nurse. There was one particular, and this was a, and, and I have a, um, Dr. Kiner works for us. She's a nurse practitioner. She has a doctorate in nursing. But there was a particular nurse at one of the facilities I worked at who had a doctorate in nursing and everyone called her doctor so-and-so and the patients thought she was a medical doctor mm-hmm. and she would never correct them that's wrong you know so but that was in a that was in a medical setting a hospital it just wasn't like she had a facebook page or something or a website i think if you're giving advice that could implicate someone's that could it's impact. A lot of, there's a lot of confusion out there yeah. so it's really comes self-care right right and it also means self doing your own research so that that's that, that's bringing this back to self-care which comes back to if you'll do the basics you one you're not gonna have to get a lot of advice because you're you're right controlling things and at that point you're looking at a small enough set of data that you can find the right expert that you feel comfortable with but right There's, right now people are looking for help who are doing everything wrong right so even the most brilliant doctor is not going to help them because you can only do so much. You can't go home with your patients right. to make sure that they're doing everything they're supposed to do. Ultimately, it's up. It's up to them. So, and I and I hate when pe- and patients say, um, you know, want to want to make the um, the insurance payments outcome based. That's not fair to the doctors because they can they can tell their patients to eat better and exercise and and not do not smoke and not drink excessively, and they can't make their patients do that. Well, I can tell you, you any, know? anytime you have an incentive-based program being, uh, you know, sales, and I was a sales manager for a lot of years in, in the medical What side. would happen was those doctors they would... They game it. They game the well, system. They would also, they they would probably end up just firing those patients. Which is one way of gaming it. You know, you, like, okay, you're not going to do what I say. You're non-compliant. 
I'm not going to see you anymore. But they were, the outcomes were so short, they were able to manipulate. Because really the outcome should be on how you're doing six months to a year from now. Well, no one's testing that. And, you know, that's, that's the problem with most incentive programs. They're all short term. Well, that's, so why, easy- that's why there needs to com- be a complete overhaul of how we even do insurance. You mm-hmm. know, and, and everybody needs to be responsible for their own health and health outcomes. Yes. Not your doctor. Folks, we can have universal health care if, if, if you take care of yourselves. If people would actually just do the basics. But all, all the Bernie bros out there that want universal health care, it'll bankrupt us because people don't try. Well, people are being very irresponsible because they can. Right. And quite frankly, the health care system is making them more sick. Right. Well, they're, it, it, so it, it's it, self-perpetuating. It, it, it appeals to the lazy mentality. I don't want to do anything. I don't know. I think there's a lot of people who are not lazy who, who put who put faith in their, into their doctor. To, they're, the putting, doc, they're putting the, a lot of pizza into their stomach, that too. But their doctor is trying to... Now, there's a lot of people out there that have changed their diets, but their doctor's got them on a statin and all these other things, you know, and, and they're just doing what they think they should do because their doctor, who they trust, is telling, telling them to do this, you know, and it's causing other problems. So I, I don't... I don't... I mean, there are plenty of people out there, and... I can attest to this because I, I know these people. They were my patients. They were getting bad advice. Mm-hmm. They were caught in that conventional medicine system that said, you know, there's no way that you can get around this. You have to take this pharmaceutical. Well, you we're know? dealing with my nine-year-old mother right now. She um, does almost everything right, but because of a Western medicine issue that set forth, I'm, I'm, I'm word speaking so I don't get censored, but something occurred through our healthcare system that precipitated a reaction that put her on her first pill when she was 88. She made it 88 years with not being on any medications. Now she's on three. Right. Drives me nuts. We're trying to get her off, but it's difficult because- Because they've scared her to death. Yep. Like you you, you are going to die from a stroke if you do not take these. One medication is what, $400 a month? Mm-hmm. That well, is- But she, she- And she's 90. But what woke her up to it, her friend who is younger, who has a much more complicated but similar health history, they did not. No, they don't have a similar health history. Well, I'm talking about as far as the AFib. Okay. And they did not put them on that medication. And that really opened her eyes like, wait a minute, his AFib's worse than mine. They're saying I have to be on this high dose. Your mom doesn't even have AFib anymore. I know, I know, but we. She had one episode of AFib and they put her on an expensive blood thinner that she's been on now for how many? How long? Almost three. Eight, Eighteen months. Eighteen months, and she's not had any more episodes of AFib. But yet, they keep scaring her to stay on it, mm-hmm. or she might have a stroke. And it was just one episode. One episode of AFib. Right, which was precipitated by something else they did. Yes. The V word. Yeah. So you know, it, it's just it's maddening. Of course, she's not my mother, um, so I can only tell you. What I think, and she I should push do. it, but then she gets information. My brother, one of my brothers, is a dentist, and he's not a hundred percent conventional medicine, but he's mostly conventional yeah. medicine, and he he doesn't want to think that he's been fooled, right? You well, know, and, well, <laughs> well, I, I've accepted it. I was fooled well, dentists, for a short for a short period of time, anyway. Dentists were not as fooled as as doctors, other than on fluoride and a few other things. You know, well, the, I, I don't know. I, would, I didn't go through. Well, I mean, it's it's, dental a, training it's a more it's a more idea. finite. It's right. your mouth. I mean, it's there's only so many things you can do in there. Yeah, it's mainly extraction, basic you know, right. So, um, let's wrap all this up. So, it's censorship is real. Man, we went all, we, Well, this is just, we it's, covered it's, all kinds of stuff. It's a passion, but censorship is real. Misinformation is real. You, this is why I always say, you know, love many, trust few, paddle your own right. canoe. Like, paddle your own canoe is is you got to research it. And it's and, tough. It, it really is. I, I don't, you, you, you follow p- certain people, mm-hmm. right? And you want to believe that they're telling you the truth. And I am constantly vetting people. I follow people. I look at what they say, what they promote. Um, and when certain things are discovered that ah, don't smell right, I keep my eye on it. Mm-hmm. But there is a constant battle. There is an information battle battle going on right now well, you, and it has been for a long time so our, our advice is always follow the money when you're doing your research follow the money even with us like okay we're giving you information so what are what are our what are our financial incentives uh, you might become a patient okay <laughs> and we push multivitamin omega-3 probiotics and enzymes yeah. i push products that i use myself right 
And there's but we also tell you if you eat better, you don't need them. Right. So that's our financial interest. I don't have. I'm, we're not getting paid by anybody else. Right. So I even have other gigs so that I can subsidize my functional medicine practice. Yes, you have to work. To I have to work. to work so that I can actually help people. Right. Via a functional medicine approach. But when you look at all the information out there, so I got like three different jobs right yeah, now. If you look at what's going on with COVID, there are all kinds of passionate discussions. But the most passionate always have the most money behind them. Mm -hmm. And so just follow the money, folks. That's one thing you need to do is what financial incentive does this advice that I'm receiving get? Um, use DuckDuckGo. Which it is, tends to be a bit, a little bit better search engine. Yes, yeah, a little but bit it's better. Still, it's, it's still it, heavily censored. As censor. far as we know, it's a, it's a lesser of two evils right now. We know Google heavily censors. So try DuckDuckGo. That's probably going to get a censor right there. Who knows? <laughs> and, and just... Think about common sense. If something has been around for a long time, like eating well and exercise, you're pretty comfortable that it's probably a good idea. If it's brand new, you may want to kind of be cautious because it seems like it's great until it's not. Yeah, and there's a lot, even, um, you know, early on in my functional medicine um, education and training and when I was just introduced to all this this new this this alternative way to practicing medicine I fell for some things too oh yeah you know we've been uh, down some rabbit holes yeah I, you know the the bioidentical hormone replacement therapy which I, I still you know use use for my menopausal people and some other times when I think it might help but I'm super super conservative with that I'd even gone to Dallas to do a pellet training mm -hmm. with bioidentical hormones where, where they actually put a pellet of a, a hormone on yeah, your skin. Yeah, an OB there was um, showing me how to insert pellets on people. Um, and it was just like, if any of your hormones were off, you just give them these pellets, put it in their butt. And he was making a ton of money doing it, just one after the other, inserting pellets. And I, and I came back and I was like, you know, I don't think I can do this. And the company that had kind of was wanted me to bring me on they got kind of upset with us well they fired you eventually. yeah they they fired me because I, I was not doing the procedure i did it on one guy who had a, a chromosomal abnormality and he actually needed testosterone right that was the only patient i ever did it on because i just because i i started seeing the or sort of you know like man this could really go wrong in so many ways and then I, that's exactly what i started seeing in patients who started coming to us who had pellets well, he gave, he also, when you were at one of these conferences and you, you asked a question like, but you're, you're trying to reconcile giving it versus why they why need it. Why they need it. And what they say. Oh, that was, and that was a, that wasn't a functional medicine um, seminar. That was at, he was an MD who was, you know, he was all things hormone replacement. Okay. And I went to this class to kind of learn how to dose some of the hormones. Um and I asked him, I was like, you know, so it's all great and fine. I'm glad that, you know, we, we know what dose to give these people and what labs to check and follow up on. But why do they, why does a 40 year old female need hormones? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what's going on? And his face got so red. He's mad. He was so, I mean, I, I was like, oh, oh my gosh, what did I just do? But his face was so red and he was spitting at just, he was so mad he was spitting. I can't remember what he said, but it was like, it doesn't, it's to the effect of, it doesn't matter. This is what you do. Because it makes money. And I was like, I was like, okay, um, this is, he's touchy about this area. And this, one of the, this doctor that was sitting beside me, she's like, I was going to ask that same question, but I'm glad I didn't. Right. Again, follow the money. This guy was making a lot of money off of it. It does help some, but... I remember, but nobody wants to talk about the why. Right, I, I remember. You know, and that for me, that's been my whole life is why, why. You had a couple of um, oil field workers that were your patients. Mm -hmm. The biggest men I've ever seen. I mean, Huge guy. I love these guys too. They were those, awesome. Gentle giants. I mean, they had more muscle in one arm than I had in my whole body. But they were suffering from low T and they came to you. It was shift work. Yeah, and I had to have this conversation. All, you know. Yes, I'm sure that testosterone is making you, you know, feel a little better, but your heart, your shift work, you're doing shift work, you're constantly sleep deprived, you know, you're, I, you like your beer a lot, you know, and they just did not want to want to hear those things. No, they just wanted that testosterone prescription. But at you least know? you got the word across. 
We also were working out with a friend that... Uh, How do we get off on this? We are just talking about follow the money. Oh, okay. So we were working... Misinformation. Misinformation. Okay. So we were, we were dealing with uh, a friend of ours who was taking testosterone and he was an old, he, he was in his 70s. Yeah, uh, yeah, he so, was in his 70s. So, man, I love that guy. And just, yeah, a brilliant individual. But he was like, I feel great. And you could tell his, his muscles were ripped. I was like, dude. And he was in his 70s. And he's, his muscles are big. And then he had a bruise on his arm. I was like, what's that from? He goes, ah, I'm, I'm having to give blood like every other week because my. His testosterone levels were so high. Well, his blood was. Oh, so, yeah, his uh, hematocrit was so high. Yeah, his blood was so thick that it was not flowing properly. So it was clotting up in his arms. And so they, they're, they're, instead of lowering his testosterone, they just give more blood. And, you know, he was, didn't want to give it up because he felt, felt so, so good. good. He died. Yeah, heart attack. Heart attack. And, you, you know, you, this is one of the things you never can prove 100%. And that was like a few weeks, you know, after we, yeah. after we had, you'd said something about that and he told us what he was doing. But the clinic had no intention of, because they were making a fortune. A lot of those tea centers have been, uh, gotten into a lot of trouble recently. But then, you know, they have shell corporations, they close down, you know, who, I don't know who to sue, and they move around and they re, so this is There's a lot of niche medicine markets out there, you know, all the, the places where you can go get your injections for your vitamins and stuff like that, Uh, the shot clinic, Mm -hmm. you know, and those just kind of irk me. Um, With with functional medicine, when you want to follow the money, it's hard to make money with functional medicine because you're basically just being paid for your time. So you can only see, you can't see that many patients, but you can always kind of tell the shady ones because they're doing the pellets. They're doing the, they're marking up lab, labs greatly. You know, they're, they're doing outrageous protocols. There's not many of them. Most of them are really good sinners, but you just be skeptical people, vet your information, follow the, follow the money. Don't trust us either. Do your own research. But we just wanted to use this um, episode to I- expose the, ugliness of and a lot of you know what's going on you know there's censorship out there Mm -hmm. you know Uh, i see a lot of the people i follow on social media media have their accounts just wiped out completely because they went against the narrative and they will just shut you down and we might get shut down so follow us on our you know sign up for our newsletter on our website amybeardmd.com because we download that information so we can keep your email because at some point we'll be censored yeah, I have no I have no doubt about that. All right, so our next episode is going to be the same conversation, but about big pharma, with an F, meaning the farming. So right now they're talking about meat shortages, and this and that, and I'm going to talk a lot to that because I intimately know the the I became an organic farmer because I saw how messed up the food supply system. In fact, that's what brought us together. Right. I saw what you were doing. You saw what I was doing. I was the food side you were the doctors like wow they were doing the same thing but different angles and it's just as ugly uh, probably not as much um, misinformation and squashing but are you kidding it's food of course there's a lot of misinformation well it's going barely on. food that's the misinformation they're selling stuff that's uh we'll get into it it's it's amazing what they're doing and how it's kind of scary are, yes it's, our, it's our, not kind of it's very scary what has happened to our food supply and production and, and the control of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you the know? fact that a, that a virus can sh- shut down a couple of plants and that affects our pork supplies. Like, how many pigs are you running through one facility and why would you possibly do that when everyone... When knows? something like this can happen. Yes, right? a distributed network is much more safe than a centralized. Right. Centralized works great until it doesn't and then the effects are catastrophic. And, you know, right now it's just pork, but... We'll go into other things. It's going to be happening with the beef. It'll correct itself, but the farmers, as usual, get effed. I mean, because they're they're they got animals that are ready to go to market, and no one can take them. Right. It's and sad. that's sad. Yeah. It, it's very sad. It's very for me. It's very upsetting because I know I know some of these people. Yeah. It's a supply chain issue and processing issue, not the producer. And hopefully, I, I really I hope I can only hope. We can only hope that you know maybe some deregulation occurs with all of this. Deregulation is key. It would it would help help us tremendously. All right. And, and, but you know they're going to associate is the fear tactics are going to come out like crazy. Yeah. If, oh. It, if you thought COVID was bad, just wait wait till have, you know when they start talking about our food supply and what they want to do with that. You know we're all going to starve and 
all this contamination is going to occur, and so, we're all going to get salmonella. So and your e. homework. Coli. So your homework tonight is go watch Salient Green. <laughs> Great movie. It's people. <laughs> it's people. <laughs> I've still I've yet to watch that. It's a great movie. Did you watch it? I've, when did you watch that? I'm I'm a, I'm an I'm an engineer nerd. I, oh. I watch all sci-fi. You don't like sci-fi. I don't, yeah, I'm not so can watch it. All right, we'll see you next time. Although folks. I feel like I'm living a sci-fi movie right now. We are. Oh yeah, so we'll we'll see you soon. Um, and ne- thanks for joining us. If you want to follow us on social media, we've got an account on Instagram and uh, Facebook. Amy Beard MD. Amy Beard MD. And you can visit our website, amybeardmd.com to see how we operate. We do, we are taking um, patients. If you, on our website, if you click on, um, there's a free ebook. And when you click on it, it signs you up for our, our mailer, mm-hmm. which we send out very few. So you won't get much. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not here to, to inundate you with a bunch of, you know. But if we get deplatformed, we'll use it to communicate right. to you guys because We'll have to. But yeah, and I'm not going to send you emails that are just going to, you know, uh, give you a little bit of information just to sell you a supplement. Very, I'm very excited about it. <laughs> we'll see you next time, folks. All bye. Right, bye. I don't take nothing that a doctor don't prescribe. I don't do no drugs, man. I-